a famous guy. Listen, you call me. You go, Joe, are you busy this afternoon? No, not really. What's up? Listen, wait to come on when you fuck this chicken come on her face. I'll give, I'll you, give you 500 you bucks. Six. I'm there. That's not bad. I'm yeah. going to fucking come on somebody's face. But to get fucked in the ass for $1,000, that's just yeah. wrong. I would want at least 10 Gs, 15 Gs. When you fuck a girl in the muffler, <laughs> you put it in her fucking mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, who yeah. first invented that? You're like, am I happy she's my girlfriend or am I sad? Like, am I sad that I just stub it up a fucking ass? Whatever's fucking good, mouth? you should be happy. Did you want to do that? Did it feel good? Did she get off on it? Then you should both be it's happy. Disgusting. Only if she's clean, it's not that disgusting. She's got to wash it all out, though. She's got to go to work. I've heard you can't just casually wash your asshole ass and have shit on their dicks and shit. That's never happened to me because I'd fucking faint. <laughs> I'd wake up and beat the girl <laughs> mercifully because <laughs> for having a dirty ass, for that's just scaring me like that. I would fucking like the time in Seattle. Uh, I put the bottle in the girl's pussy. And you put a work bottle in a girl's a pussy? Cooler. What? I was at the same chick Ooh. I found. The, the same chick that I way. found the aluminum foil in her asshole. That same chick we were in Seattle. And I was drinking, uh, you know, uh, a Gallo Brothers wine cooler. And I started rubbing the bottle around the oh little monkey. God. She was a stripper. And then I pulled the little thing and I started working the fucking bottle inside a little monkey. And I started. Yo, you know how dangerous that is? That's how Fatty well, Arbuckle you, killed the girl. The fucking story, Fatty Arbuckle. Uh -huh. Fucking working this bottle as a little monkey, right? And I'm down there about to lick the oh fucking click. God. And next thing you know, I hear the suction of the bottle had sucked the period out of her. Oh! This brown vampire blood from Blade shot into this. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little darker like it was just disgusting bro i fainted because i in my mind i cut her with the bottle like, oh I'm like, no i'm like i cut this so you bitch. fainted like, for real i went down she had a woke me up. She oh was my god like, she's she a had nasty wake fucking up. animal she didn't give a fuck i mean about a month earlier i pulled the fucking little aluminum fall out of her ass what that was the, the same girl same chick in seattle oh bro that was god. that was a year and a half of fucking many, great freaky story how many things bro, can you stick in a girl bro you know she was a fucking savage you oh only live God. once. If you're dating a savage and you really like on you're not in love with her, you try to do shit to her until she breaks up with you. I used to sell Valium when I first got divorced in Colorado. I was buying and in Colorado it was real Valiums with the V in them. Not these motherfucking things they're making now. What's the difference? Those are the Mac those fives and those tens with the V in the middle where the V was cut out. What so do they do? What Valiums just put you on another planet. So I used them as to come down from something. You know, you do an eight ball of coke. It's seven in the morning. <laughs> you got to come down. You're gonna be watching daytime television till lunchtime. You want to get hilarious. your dicks up, you know. So you read volumes, and then you chill out. I remember one time in Beaumont, man. I OD'd them. I made thirty of those motherfuckers in three days. This is in 2006. I had to stay in Houston for four days at the Intercontinental. I couldn't even talk on the phone to people. People wow. call me. My number. Was what year was this? This is 2005 or six. After the longest Jesus shot, I went Christ. to I went to Houston. And I wanted these fucking pills, and the kids like, we ain't got them, but we got Valium. I said, right, give me the fucking Valiums. What the fuck, Joe Rogan? This was horrible. I hit boom, 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 boom. But like the feds or something. I open up my eyes. I look at the clock. It's one o'clock. The kid came at 7 to pick me up. I didn't pick up the phone. They knocked. I didn't hear it. I guess the chick woke up, left. I woke up. It was the hotel manager. He was like, you staying another night? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I need payment. And I just went in my pocket and gave him like a $100 bill. They go, keep the change. I went right back to sleep. I woke up the next Monday. I slept straight. 24 hours. I slept straight till Monday morning at 8. I called my friend who was an attorney to come to Beaumont and pick me up. And he goes, you're going to make your flight? No. I didn't even call Southwest. I had to buy another plane ticket. So I just said, I, I drove with him. I went and got a big Mexican meal. I was dehydrated, everything. And I went and got another big Mexican meal. And then he goes, what do you want to do? You want to go to my house? And I said, no. Take me to the Intercontinental. Pete had a deal over there for like 60 a night before Felipe Pete. fucked it up. So I stayed in there for three days. How did Felipe fuck it up? He got fucked up with a chick that had a dick and a pussy. With those <laughs> best nights. She had a pussy, and instead of calling her, <clears throat> Her name is Nikki. He kept calling her Tricky because she had a dick and a pussy. But anyway, back to the situation. <laughs> I got to that hotel went Monday. I, I lived off room service. The money I made in, in Beaumont, I had to call Terry to send me like the credit card number. I had eaten it because all I could do was eat to refuel. I couldn't even talk to nobody. My agents were calling me. Where are you? They want to see you. I would call people and I couldn't. This side of my face wasn't moving, bro. Wow. I was going, brum, brum. Like I was tired of too. Like you know when you go to the dentist and your face is dead. That's how bad I was. I didn't make it out of fucking Houston till Thursday. Wow. 
Wow. It took me five days, and that's the last time I basically ate a pill. That's why after that I knew <laughs> something had to be done. I did one of those. I did a fucking 16th of those things Rush Limbaugh was on. I did a 16th. I did a pill cut in half, cut in half again, cut in half again. It was an eighth or a 16th of an Oxycontin. Really? That a friend of mine gave me. I had to lay down. Never again. My blood pressure dropped. Was it dizzy. Rush doing like 100 of those oh, bitches? 50, yeah. That, that, that's, <laughs> when I thought about that, my heart went out to him. I think it was on. It was 50 a day he was doing. Was it? There was no, I was, eat, I ate an eighth and it was fucking mind boggling what I felt like, how bad I felt like. That just crushes your body, that fucking synthetic heroin. I said, what the fuck? Give me the fucking 30 Valiums. I go, I'll eat two or three of them. I'll bring the rest to LA and give them out. I, I know a friend who like Valium. And as soon as you chewed them, you hear, na 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 Oh my, the first night I ate two, the second night I ate two. The next day I didn't have reefer, so I popped one for lunch. That night I went to the club and I started drinking them with fucking Jägermeisters. <laughs> now what people don't know about Valiums is they sit in your fucking fat. So you eat a 10 point milligram Valium, five of it goes into your body, the other five goes into your fucking fat. So what happens is the next day when you wake up and you drink your water thinking you're all healthy and you hit that fucking one hit of a joint, that Valium kicks right back up again. But what do you do? You put a 10 inside of you. So now you got the five that you popped and the five that's motherfucking lurking in there. So now you're popping these every day. And that's why I love when the people tell me they eat volumes because this shit just pops up in your fat. You'll never get that out of here. People who eat volumes, 50% of them are going to go to the fucking gym. So that just, just sits in your fat. So every time you touch alcohol, you smoke a cigarette or smoke a volume, it just kicks that shit back into your system and shit. It's amazing until it just piles up. So I, I bought 30 of them. 30. 30. It was a Thursday night at 11 when I got them. The first night I popped one, the next day I popped one, that night I popped two or three of them, drank Jaeger by Sally, I popped two in the afternoon. I couldn't fall asleep, I went to the club, and at the club I had a brown bag. I didn't even know what was in there, it wasn't like in a weed container. And I just kept popping at the club, <laughs> drinking Jägermeister. The second show I had to do on a stool, and the management knew I was whacked out. So they, <laughs> they, they pay me my money, I buy an eight ball. And some chick gives me a number. But in the fucking dilemma, I didn't give a fuck if she had a boyfriend. She told me she had to go home, wait for the boyfriend. I went home by myself and did the fucking eight ball, called the dealer, and then called the chick. And she's like, I'm ready to come over and suck your dick now. She comes over, the dealer comes over. I leave with him, and he takes me deep into the Beaumont motherfucking caribou down there. <laughs> To some Christians, guys, yeah, some good old Christians that was selling some cocaine straight from fucking Noriega's stash. Four in the morning, my jaw, we're driving back. I'm fucking paranoid. We're going to get pulled over. I get back to the hotel Sunday, Saturday night. It was Saturday, going into Sunday. My flight, Southwest, was leaving at like 9 from Houston. I had a still, I was getting picked up at 6.30. It's four or five. I pick up another eight boy. I go back to the room. The chick shows up. She sucks my dick one time, but it was so dead. <laughs> it was way beyond dead. It was dead. No, Houdini of 10 chicks in the room sucking their fingers up my ass. <laughs> Alpha brain. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, any of those pills. I was going straight on blow for five, six hours plus the, the amount of volumes I had. Dog, at eight o'clock in the morning, the cocaine was gone. She was all sucked up. She was laying in one bed. You know those hotels that have two beds? Yes. I went to get the brown paper bag and stick my hand there. There was nothing in there. I flipped the bag over, nothing. Here I am, John. I ate 30 fucking values in three <laughs> days. I couldn't fucking believe oh it. I drank a bunch God. of water and went to sleep, right? Whoa. It's Sunday, maybe. 10 o'clock, I go to sleep. I'm trying to fuck her at this point. My dick is flat. <laughs> it's got blood on it. I'm scratching it from trying to whack off in the bathroom. I'm sniffing her underwear. I'm sniffing her bra. I'm sniffing her fucking feet. I'm trying to bang out something because you need, you need to bang something out to fall asleep, right? Because you're fucking all jacked up. I'm trying right. to bang one out. Next thing you know, dog, I swear to God, I hear boom, 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 boom. I just passed out. I'm on the bed. I, I must have jerked myself off to sleep, whatever. Because I went back, and she was in the other bed. That's how coked up I was. It was a naked lady, but I was jerking her off. That's the disease <laughs> and the pills. I couldn't even wake her up no more. She's like, you're not going to get it hard. Don't wake me up no more. My dick was flat. It had scratches from me trying to whack it off. It was all small. Only the helmet comes out, and you got to yeah. start from scratch. So all you're whacking off, and then you got to work it, work it, work it, and all of a sudden it just dies. Like you think of your uncle playing baseball with your son, and it dies.